Hey everyone, today's video is going to be a little bit different than my usual content, as in today's video we are going to be going over the history of psychology. So really with no more delay, let's just get right into it. To begin, we should understand that psychology, the process of answering questions about the mind using science, is a relatively new idea compared to the old process of, you know, psychological perspectives to understand the problems of the mind. The idea to use science to answer these questions first really emerges due to the work of Wilhelm Wundt. Wundt was a German scientist and the first person to be referred to as a psychologist. He held a belief that psychology was the scientific study of the conscious experience, and that the goal of the science was to understand components that would result in the experiences we understand and have. Wundt would use a process called introspection to try and understand these components. Introspection being when someone attempts to understand their own conscious and examine it with as much objectivity as humanly possible. To study these introspections, Wundt would design experiments with the goal of testing and trying to produce a scientifically observable experience of the mind. His methods of trying to understand the brain was piece by piece and experiment by experiment, trying to understand the structure of the brain by understanding its parts. And this was known as structuralism. However, due to the highly subjective nature of introspection, experiments found very little correlation, and due to this, structuralism quickly fell out of favor in the psychological community. To replace it was the work of William James. This American psychologist believed in a different perspective, one that was more so derived from the work of Darwin. He believed that if all traits are developed in order to help one survive in an environment, then so too must behavior. So in his mind, the purpose of psychology was instead to study the function of behavior and his perspective was known as functionalism. Functionalism would focus on how mental activities would help an organism fit into its environment, and unlike the structuralists, they believed that the brain could not be studied in individual experiments, but rather that the brain was greater than the sum of its parts, and as such, only by studying the whole brain could one gain a greater understanding of it. Following James was one of the most well-known psychologists in history, Sigmund Freud. Freud was an Austrian neurologist who was fascinated by patients who were suffering from hysteria and neurosis. Freud theorized that the problems they were facing originated from an unconscious mind, and to him, it was only by gaining access to the unconscious mind that a person could solve these problems. This solution was called the psychoanalytical theory, and it focuses on the role of the unconscious mind as well as early experiences. This perspective would come to dominate clinical psychology for decades following Freud's work. However, so far, both Freud and the functionalists focused on using the inner experience to study the mind. However, some other psychologists had an issue with this idea and chose to instead use the outer experiences of a person. One result of this studying was the external was behaviorism, originally derived from the works of Ivan Pavlov, who discovered that one could learn due to conditioning of a reflex. John B. Watson would connect Pavlov's finding to the human and psychological experience. Watson's new behaviorism would focus on this new idea of learned behavior and its connection to the internal qualities of an organism, and behaviorism would often use animals in experiments, believing that what was learned from animals could also be applied to humanity. Watson's work would be continued by many different behaviorists, including B.F. Skinner, an American psychologist who studied how behavior was influenced by consequences. He invented a box known conventionally as the Skinner's box that could remove external stimuluses and variables, allowing for a more objective experimentation. So behaviorism and psychoanalysts would come to dominate psychology for quite a bit of time. However, some psychologists disliked the deterministic and pessimistic beliefs that both walks of psychology focused on, so they created a new focus for psychology. This focus was humanism. Humanism is the perspective that focuses on the potential of good within humanity. Two of the well most well-known humanists are Maslow and Rogers. Starting with Maslow, he was an American psychologist best known for creating the Pyramid of Needs, this being a belief that in order to reach inner fulfillment, one must have all of their prior needs met. And in order to be able to focus on some needs, other needs must be met. For example, someone who needs food won't really be concerned about the intimacy of their life. Rogers also emphasized the good in people, creating a new therapeutic technique called the client-centered therapy, where a patient would take a leading role in therapy as opposed to previous systems where the therapist would. Rogers also asserted that a therapist must hold three essential features in order to use his approach, these being an unconditional positive regard, genuineness, and empathy. Behaviorism had pulled the focus of psychology away from the internal mind for quite some time. 
this would be rectified in the 1950s as a new perspective would emerge, known as the cognitive revolution. And within no time, the study of conscious returned to the focus of psychology. That's all I really got for you guys today. Starting with functionalism, psychology would slowly change over time to the psychology we understand today. And it is understanding this history of psychology that we can come to understand really how we've gotten to what we understand about the brain in this moment. Um, but this has been a quick basic summary of the history of psychology. I hope you all enjoyed. Until next time, ciao.